dollar cash prize and we are on the action here we go masters finals isaiah williams on your left rally holbert on the right first seed versus thir third seed of the tournament and tapu lele wonder tag to start off for isaiah he starts to execute though it's not gonna be when you his play idea. four of them it yeah, you, 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 it's going to happen here or there. He is opting to go with that fourth copy, not just two, not just three. He really wants to make sure that Parallel City, Sudowoodo, when they come down, he can put his Pokemon right back out, and he'll always have the resources to be able to take those knockouts with Riotous Beating. Exactly, and a Wonder Tag most likely getting Bridget again. Such a classic play, especially with these Zorark decks. Now, Isaiah has been a really big fan of getting that Sudowoodo on his first turn against the other Zoark decks. He really likes to put it in place to make sure that they cannot have any way to be able to take advantage of putting their own Skyfield in play and using things like Shaman, additional Tapu Lele. So, interesting to see if he tries to, if he falls with that same train of thought in this matchup and gets that Sudowoodo here from the Bridget that you were mentioning. Yeah, exactly, and it kind of forces your opponent to get out that Alolan Muck as well. Right. And I mean, it's only a 1-1. One, one. It's very easy for it to one of those pieces to be in the prize cards, or, I mean, it's still a stage one. you got to be able to get it out. Now, the interesting thing I was talking about earlier with that Alola Muck is when one player plays it and the other doesn't, the player who has it is kind of in command for when that one shot gets taken. Because otherwise, the only way to ever take a one-hit knockout is to use Hex Maniac and put a bunch of Pokemon onto the bench. Exactly, and I think I actually see a Getsus in Isaiah's hand, and if you were listening to the interview I did with him, because last game, game three, he gets us to just completely right. shut down his opponent. Well, yes. he was like, yeah, I kind of said it to myself, I'm not going to play Getsus unless I have two Zora in my hand, because right. Bridget is just so much better. Exactly. You have to be able to have those Zoroas in play. You can't sacrifice your setup, because if that guest just misses and you're only drawing one card or something like that, you could really put yourself in a compromising position, and it's not really how you want to start your first turn. Well, the opposite of a compromising position right here, there's three Zoras on the bench and the Floatstone coming down on the Execute. And he did also get the roadblock up. Sudowoodo is in play, meaning Riley will not be able to pop off this turn and go past that four bench without playing Hex Maniac, which would really just be a moot point at that point anyways, because he can't be able to use setup or anything afterwards. All right, Battle Compressor coming down for Riley. Of course, pitching that Execute. Remember, Propagation is one of the keys for both of these decks. Just being able to play most of your cards for free. Computer Search, Ultra Ball trade it's just insane it really is incredible the amount of versatility that that card can have on this deck both you know starting with this battle compressor here is really one of the best cards you could start with outside of bridget because it takes some of those dead cards like karen out of your discard pile it gets the execute out of your discard pile or gets the execute in your discard pile as well uh but you yeah, see kind of where this ultra ball goes and everything for riley now yeah, Ultra Ball discarding the Execute that he got back from Propagation and a Pokemon Ranger. So he kind of pitched a few of his one of supporters, even got the Ranger out of his hand too. And now there is the Tapu Lele with its Wonder Tag for Bridget as well. We do see the Sudowoodo come into play. Now for Isaiah, the only thing that he loses is his Tapu Lele. He still gets to keep all three of his Zerua, but Riley, because he opened Tapu Lele, had to bench another one as well, and he has to put that Sudowoodo into play. He's going to be limited to just two Zeruas at this point. Yeah, it is unfortunate that he had to discard the Tapu Lele instead of the Execute that's in the active spot, because he could have just gotten it back later on, but he didn't really want another Pokemon getting damaged. Now, interesting to see that he decided to pass with that Execute and put with the Floatstone on it, knowing that his opponent opens with the Tapu Lele. It really only took a DC, of course, to do it, so Riley does take that first prize there, but Isaiah does get the first Zorark GX on the board and has access to trade right away. Yeah, there we see the Zorark and a setup for four cards. Double Colorless on the Zorark, so he will be able to put some pressure on this Tapu Lele, and here now we see a trade. Discarding the Gets is opting not to play it. Let's have another supporter in his hand. You know, Isaiah going to be looking for a couple other Zorak GXs this turn. He wants to get his board set up as much as possible to be able to have to, you know, be able to consistently use as many trades as he can throughout the game, and especially when it's for free with Propagation. Yeah, exactly. And the way his deck really counteracts the Sudowoodo is with his Hex Maniacs. So he might be looking for that too, but... 
Oh, there we see a choice band on the Zorark and an N. Both players going to be going down to a fresh or going to a fresh hand of six. Um, now, well, Rally is going down to five. To, correct. Yeah, Rally did take out that first prize. So Rally's actually going to be only going to five cards. Now, interestingly enough, Rally Spence is full, so he's not going to be able to get that Alola Muck out until one of his Pokemon gets knocked out, or unless he plays the one copy of Hex Maniac that he has as well on his own. Now, both players it looks like are opting to play the red card. That has been probably the tech card of the tournament, I would say. Oh, uh, yeah. Most of the popular Zorak decks that have done well, especially in Day 2, play that one red card, and it's just a way to combat your opponent when you can go red card Hex Maniac and shut off your opponent's ability to trade while you just have everything set up. Oh, yeah. It's insane. It really is. I've seen several turns just... just Games flipped completely with a single card turn with the red card, the Hex Manic, as you mentioned, or the red card followed up by a Getsus, taking a couple more out of their hands. There's just so many different things that can be com uh, combined with that because normally you can't play N and use those at the same time without having something like Magnezone in play, allowing you to use two supporters. All right there, we see another propagation and trade. He actually gets a Skyfield, which I think he has another one in hand, but Skyfield, while it's a great card, it's useless right now with these pseudo widows out. Right, because both of them are putting that block up, block up into play. Neither player can go past the four bench until abilities are turned off. Now, the interesting thing about Isaiah's list when you're playing for execute, it makes it much easier to be able to play Hex Maniac and follow up with enough bench Pokemon to use Riotous Beating for a one shot and get to that eight bench. You propagate, put all the eggs in your hand. Then play the Hex Maniac, you get past the pseudo Rooter Roadblock, put them all down. At the end of your opponent's next turn, guess what? You just discard all four eggs again, and you could do it again the following turn. Yeah, it's such a great interaction, and it really shows that he's tested this format, and, like, well, there's going to be a lot of pseudo Rooter, so this is the best counter for it. Right. He just, it was his, basically, version of saying, hey, instead of that alone muck, I'm going to go with that fourth execute to basically make sure that I can consistently be able to get the damage that I need on board with Riotous Beating from Zorak. Yeah, meanwhile, after Isaiah's Riotous Beating and dealing a lot of damage to that Tapu Lele, Riley gets a Zorak GX of his own and a Colrus for eight. Not the biggest Colrus we've seen on stream. It's more average now. And it's all thanks to those Hooded Widows. Right. But, I mean, eight cards are still pretty good. I mean, it's more than even a Professor Sycamore would have been able to get you here. So, and you don't even have to worry about dumping any resources in the process. And so far, his hand is looking pretty good. There's another Zorark, a computer search, even a puzzle of time. He's got a lot of options in this hand, so Riley's going to be able to do whatever he wants on the following turn. When he's got a combination of computer search, puzzle of time, I mean, he can... He can pull off whatever play he really needs to make, so if he wants to get his Hex Maniac on board next turn, so that way he can maybe put down his Alolan Griver and, you know, knock off his own Tapu Leles, he can do some pretty good work. Yeah, and we actually saw the first trade got him that double colorless energy he was missing, so he will be able to put some more pressure on this Zora <coughs> if he chooses to. And especially trying to save this Tapu Lele a little bit as well. Right, you don't really want to give up the two free prizes right off the bat. Oh, well, actually, Riley says I'm kind of fine with that. He doesn't want to give his Zorak GX a chance to get hit already, so he's just deciding to actually use Energy Drive instead. Yeah, well, they're kind of at a stalemate right now with these two pseudo Widows, right. where you can't really take a one-hit knockout on a Zorark, so it, you're going to play the two-hit game. Right. And with the two-hit game, you can afford the get rid of a Tapu Lele. And remember, if the Tapu Lele gets knocked out, he has a bench spot for Alolan Muck. Right. He's going to be able to put the Grimer down onto the board, so really, if anything, that's exactly what Riley wants. Uh, meanwhile, a third Zorark GX comes down on Isaiah's side of the field, and he will be drawing six cards a turn for free. Right. Both players are actually opting to play four copies of Zorark GX. They wanted to make sure that those Zorarks get into play as quickly as they possibly could, make sure that they don't miss a beat. And here's that red card that we were just talking about. So Riley's actually going to go down to four cards for that big horror to use, putting those computer search and all those other resources. All that's going away. It'll be interesting to see if he follows this red card up with a Hex Maniac or a Getsus, just multiple ways to disrupt his opponent. You see him holding that Via Seeker on the top. I'm interested to see which route he kind of goes for. I, 
I'd like to see a get this actually from Isaiah. And oh, there you go. We see. And wow, getting rid of the puzzle of time, but he does show a Shaman EX in his hand. Oh, he, he drew from the prizes instead of his deck. That, that's not good. Oh, that's that's not something you want to make sure you have. I mean, granted, he may take the two prizes here, but you, you got to wait a little bit before you can actually get to them. <laughs> this is pretty great, actually. The one card he drew was a Battle Compressor. That means he can put the rest of his Execute in the discard and also some other tech supporters like Hexmaniac, right. like Guzma, for later on in the game. Big turn here that's going to be coming down from Isaiah. He's going to be able to take the prize lead from this. Now, Riley... Riley's hand is definitely going to be live on the following turn because of that Shaman EX when he has the free bench space. And of course, he's still going to have his two, op two options to be able to use trade as well. Yeah, that is where in this mirror match, red card to Hexmanac edges out. Red card gets us just a little bit. Now watching through, Isaiah really carefully considering his options before he takes a knockout. Wants to make sure he's getting everything just right. I mean, they're in the finals at this point, and it's been a long day, long past two days for both players. So you've got to imagine there's some mental exhaustion, a little bit of worn down. So you I mean, really if I'm exhausted, gotta take your time. then you have to know that they're exhausted. <laughs> right. We're not the ones. We're, we're just talking. They have to sit there. They're thinking. They're going over decisions, micro decisions at every moment where every decision could be the difference in a $5,000 take home or going home with nothing. Yeah, exactly. And to be fair, it's not nothing. So. No, I, I'm sorry. At this point, at this point, you're either one of these is guaranteed at least at 2,500. So both players in a wonderful position here. They've got to be excited. No matter who comes, who decides to take the trophy home, take the victory, take the title, the other player can't really be too upset with themselves. Second place out of over a thousand players is a pretty incredible feat. Yeah, it's essentially. Bigger than a lot of our old national tournaments. Absolutely. It's bigger than a lot of them. It's almost as big as the one that we had last year, our international. And it's bigger than a lot of the internationals that have been going on as well. Yeah, and there we see Propagation putting in a lot of work. I believe that was the computer search in his hand. Eyeing down that Puzzle of Time. And Puzzle of Time has also just been a card that has been excelling in all these formats standard and expanded just being able to kind of play a little looser with your resources and that works especially just because trade discard a few resources you might need later on in the game well yeah i'll puzzle them back right and it just gives you so many different options it turns your discard pile into a mini toolbox you can get whatever you want from there it just allows for these incredible combos especially when partnered with trade giving you these massive 10 15, 20. I've even seen a, a hand that was probably even 30 cards at one point to, to, over the last two days. Okay, I think we might see a big turn here from Riley. He computer searched for the puzzle of time, and then double puzzled for the computer search back, and a battle compressor. And then battle compressor is discarding three important supporters. Gets his Hex Maniac and the Guzma. Now, I don't. which one do you think he's going to end up going with this turn? So the size of Isaiah's hand is enormous. So he could be going for a Getsus, but Hex Maniac could also mean he could bench more Pokemon and try to play around this roadblock. But this could be the Hex Maniac red card turn that we were just talking about. He's playing a computer switch again, so could be going for the red card. It's all these tech trainers, items, everything, and they have access to it just because Zorak goes through your deck so fast. You discard right. all the bad cards that you don't need. And then all you're left with is just good cards, and there is red card. Wow, back-to-back -back turns. Isaiah first doing it to Riley. Now Riley says, ah, I didn't really like that very much, so I'm going to play my own. Yeah, I'm like, going to put you down to four. I, I was able to get past it, but let's see if you can. Right. Now, is he going to try to strip away the rest of his hand, or is he going to go for the ability lock? Let's see where he goes. Grabbing, he is. Oh, looks it's like he's definitely gonna go the, the Hex Maniac. Maniac. There it is. Playing down the Hex Maniac, allowing him to bench the Zorua. Which is great, because after the turn, if nothing happens, he can discard that Shaman that's a liability on his bench. Of course. This is gonna, that's the best part about playing the Hex Maniac when the Pseudobood was in play. You really get to go around it and then just kind of manipulate the way that your bench will play out from there. All right, Riot is beating, dealing 150 damage, taking the knockout on the Zork GX. Now there's no energy on Isaiah's side of the field. And only three bench Pokemon. 
Well, sure, you can play a couple more because Sudowoodo is uh, turned off this turn, but even though the roadblock is clear, all of Isaiah's executes are in his discard pile. I don't think he's going to have enough Pokemon to be able to take a knockout on the Zork if he wants to. Um, and actually, I believe there is actually a double colorless synergy on Isaiah's oh, uh, Zorak okay. GX. It was a little bit hidden there, so it's kind of hard to see. So we might even see a Guzma to take out that Shaman you were just talking about. I mean, definitely a few different options that, you know, Isaiah has to be able to advance his progress here and try to get down to two prizes. Yeah, definitely. He might even be eyeing that Shaman if he has enough resources, just because if he takes a knockout on a non-EX, that means he'll just have to knock out another Pokemon later down the right. line. Oh, computer search now for Isaiah. Uh, Usually players. a great card, but without access to execute, he's discarding a resource that he needs in Versus Seeker, I believe. Yeah, I think that's a Versus Seeker that he's going from, uh, that he's discarding. So whatever he's getting off this computer search has got to be something important if he's thinking that a Versus Seeker needs to go to his discard pile for it. No. All right, action on Isaiah. He most likely got the double puzzle. I'm going to say that that yeah. was it. I'm going to go with yes. So it looks like he's going with his Rua, so he wants to make sure he has a way to put his fourth Shorak GX back into play. And I'm thinking we might actually see... So we're going to see the Colrus here. So he's going to go up to nine cards. A little bit better than the earlier Colrus. Still nothing, you know, insane or crazy, but... I don't think that there's going to be a way to knock out the Zork. He would actually need to just draw four basic Pokemon out of his deck, which... And the Skyfield. Uh, yeah, and the Skyfield off of these nine cards, which, sure, he's got three Topo Leles, he's got his Shamans, uh, but that's actually, I think, the only ones that he has left in his deck. So he'd literally have to waste all of his abilities in terms of setup and Wonder Tag in order to take a knockout on Zork if he wants to. All right, we do see the Skyfield in his hand. He also has a double colorless, but... I don't really see much else of use, at least this turn. I think I saw a couple Skyfield and a couple Double Colorless, a Choice Band, just a bunch of cards that really aren't going to get him where he needs to go at this point. A Puzzle, a Hex. Um, he does have a Zorak for the following turn, um, both the Mind Jack and the GX, so he's going to have a couple different options. So if Riley decides to do something next turn where he... Uh, extends past his Sudi Wudo, you know, to be able to knock out the, the Zork, he's going to be able to use Mind Jack to punish the return play. Exactly, and here he retreats the Sudi Wudo to the Zork GX. Most likely we'll see a Riotous beating for 130 damage. Do you see a second choice band coming down? It means Field Blower would be a great card from Riley's side at this point, but... Uh, Isaiah does play an additional copy. He plays three copies of a Choice Band, as opposed to a lot of the other Zorak lists only playing two, so it makes it much easier to be able to find it in the turns that he needs. And there's Riotous Beating, putting a lot of damage on the Zorak GX, but not enough to actually take the knockout. Now action back on Riley to see what he can do. And remember, uh, abilities are active You need to make now. sure that they discard... Okay, yeah. perfect. They just caught it just in time. So, since abilities are active now, like you said, Robok is active, and Execute and Trade will get to work. Second Trade. See a special charge there. I think he's got a double colorless in the discard pile, so we might see that hit the board this turn. The third Zorak GX here from, uh, from Riley. It's definitely going to be something that he wants to see as quickly as he can, so... Yeah, anything you can do, I can do better is what Riley's doing right now. You can get three Zork in play. Well, I'm going to knock out your Zork and get three in play. Right. You want to play the red card? I'll play the red card. And my Hexmania is really going to stick. So we see the Skyfield. He might be able to do the play where he gets the knockout on the Zork, which I would be huge. I see it happening. I mean, he's got... He's got the ability to use his executes before playing the Hex Maniac. He does have both of them in the discard pile, so he only needs to find two more Pokemon and a Hex Maniac in order to actually pull off that knockout, because he has the Choice Band on his active Zorak as well. And I mean, I see an Ultra Ball, I see a Shaman in his hand, so if he has access to the Hex Maniac, he should be able to pull this off. Yeah, exactly, and his and hand I is so massive that... There's the Ultra Ball for free, essentially, thanks to double propagation from Execute. So they just want to make sure. Judges are just double-checking, making sure that all the cards being used correctly. I don't think there's another Pokemon, though, for him to actually be able to grab. Which, I mean, fair enough. You didn't really lose anything by playing that Ultra Ball. It's just two Executes you can get right back. Anyways, 
So you got to get some knowledge of your deck, double check to see all the counts, and you know figure it out from there. But he may still have both Pokemon that he needs. Yeah, he has a Zora in hand and a Shaman, I believe. As and there's well. the Field Blower, as you were talking about. But this time it gets rid of the Float Zone. The way that Isaiah was actually trying to set up his turn, where you just bring out the Pseudo Widow, it has free retreat, right. and then try to plan out later. So here we go. We see the Via Seeker. I, he's got to be eyeing that Hex Maniac. We're going to see the Executes come out of his discard pile as well. He's already put it into play. He's going to get the eight Pokemon. Riley's going to be able to take this knockout on the Zork GX. He's going to go down to one prize. He's just that much closer to being the champion at the Dallas Regional Championships. Yeah, essentially, Ryan, Riley is doing what Isaiah's deck does best. Is I'll red card you, disrupt you a little bit with Hex. All right, and then... I'm going to actually put Propagation to use. Get some more Pokemon to play this guy field. Hex you again. And it's just, he's putting on a clinic, and that's why he's first seed. Right. It's crazy because Isaiah's deck is built to do this. He's got the additional copies of Execute. He's got the additional copies of Hex. But Riley says, I don't need the extra copies. I'm going to do it with what I've got, and I'm going to make sure that I have the answers that I need. Remember, Riley has been doing this this whole game when he started going second which is one of the inherent disadvantages in a Zorark mirror. Now, Ultraball coming down from Isaiah, he's going to be able to go to Zoro in place, so both players have been able to keep their Zoraks going. They haven't had to worry about, you know, losing... <clears throat> excuse me. They haven't had to be worried about losing them too much, because as soon as one gets knocked out, they're putting another one into play. And again, when this roadblock turns off, that's going to be huge for Riley. He actually gets to keep that Force Zerua, just dump his Executes again, and his Lele and Shaman, the two biggest liabilities that he actually has on his bench. Yeah, unfortunately for Isaiah, he didn't have any other Pokemon to get with the Bridget, only the Zorua. And he played a Hex Maniac. Oh, wait, no, sorry. He traded the Bridget, played the Hex. Right. Yeah. So, unfortunately, though, big, if he had been able to knock out the uh, the roadblock and everything and put an extra Pokemon, you know, the Shaman could have come off you know, on the following turn after, you know, once Riley ends his turn. But that Shaman's going to be sticky on the board. But at this point, you're down to one prize. Riley only needs to take out the Pseudo Wudo or that Zoro either which way. So, if we see a Guzma from Riley, that would be a way to steal up the game. Well, remember, he doesn't have access to abilities this turn thanks to right. X Maniac. So. He will just need to draw Choice Band and Double Colorless. If he's able to pull off those or a combination of the Double Puzzle of Time, either one of those, that will seal up the first game. Put him up to a 1-0 start against Isaiah Williams here in the finals. This is going to be a trying moment okay. here. We see the Choice Band. One Puzzle of Time. He's getting closer. And there's the Double, double Colorless energy. Game I one goes to Riley Holbert. And just putting on a clinic, Zork GX Riot is beating for 210 damage just multiple times in a row. And wow. It's just, I mean, this train is incredible. Once it starts, there's just nothing you can do to stop it. Even if both players are playing Hex Maniac over and over, limiting ability use, because they have access to Chorus, getting these giant hands, I mean, they just can get whatever resources they need at any point in time. It's incredible the level of consistency that this deck is able to bring to the table. Yeah, it, it's insane to watch, insane to play against, and man, uh, I, I was talking with Riley and Isaiah at different times before Top Cut, and I was like, Riley, how do you feel about going into the match? I know Isaiah's pretty confident, remember, 12-0 against any Zorak variant this weekend, and Riley's like, oh, if James can take a game, I, I could take two, I could take two. <laughs> Well, and really, that's all the confidence that you need. If you even have just that little bit of confidence, you can go in, and he's clearly, he's already taken one, so he's got two more shots. He, Isaiah's going to have to come back from this 0-1 victory, take two games in a row with 50 minutes on the clock in order to seal up this title if he wants a chance at being the victor. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who actually pulls it out, of course. Riley has been the favorite the whole tournament, and in my bracket, I actually picked Riley to win. Oh, I On my bracket, I actually had Jose Marrero on the win, and he was uh, knocked out in his first round, so ah, I, I, got a, I got a little bit of an upset right away, but hey, we've got all the different brackets coming to the close here. Your bracket's about to be, uh, it has a shot at becoming that victor here, so let's see.
Yeah. We're, Honestly, I, though, I think a lot of people's brackets were kind of spoiled because the four favorites, like the four really well-known players, just dropped off. Right. All three Drampa Garbodors, all three of them felt super confident in their Zorak matchup, and all three of them got taken out by a Zorak deck right in that first round. Yeah, it's crazy because I think there was, what, five people playing that deck in the whole tournament? Four of them made day two, three of them made top eight, and it just ended there. Right. It, it, in the tracks, you know, I, I don't think any of them could have expected that to be the outcome once they put themselves in the top eight position. I know they were very confident going in, but alas, at this point, they are no more, and here we are with Riley Holbert and Isaiah, Isaiah Williams about to go into game two of the finals. Isaiah going to be leading off. Let's see how this one goes. Can Isaiah put a little bit more pressure? off starting a Shaman EX, not the ideal start you want to see, but he does have plenty of cards in his hand to work with. A Bridget in his hand just alone, multiple Ultra Balls, Computer Search, and Double Colorless. It's interesting to see how much pressure he tries to put this turn. I would not be surprised. Again, I've seen watching Isaiah play over this weekend, he likes to have as much going on in his first turn as possible. I could even see a battle compressor coming down here. He loves to put a Skyfield in play, fill up his bench as much as possible, because he knows Riley's going to end up putting down a Sudowoodo anyways. So might as well get those Shamans into play, and they're just going to get dropped off anyways. Yeah, I would love a battle compressor here, because... It would enable his two Ultra Balls in hand, and it would just, it'd, it'd be really good. But. And you're talking about thinning the deck as well. So there's just a lot that can be accomplished with this hand. He has a Sky Field already. He has a double color synergy to attach for the turn. I mean, that hand is looking pretty monstrous from Isaiah's side. And there's the Battle Compressor coming down, and he, there he goes, Hex Maniac, Execute, Execute. What better cards can you put in your discard for this matchup? I really can't think of many. And he's going to even be able to have access to the Bridget if he wants. I mean, he could even use, you know, a uh, he can use Getsis. He, he's got the condition that he wants. He's got the Utilable Ultra Ball in his hand to get to two Zeruas, so he could have done it if he wanted to. That is true, but I think he's just eyeing more of a Hex Maniac play because now that he's going first again, he will have the opportunity to take the first knockout as well. Right. And, again, what's crazy for Riley is if he's going to want to close the series, Game 3, he's going to be the one going first and be at that advantage. So things are looking good for him here, but Isaiah is not going down without a fight with this monstrous hand here that he has to open up the game. See uh, where his bridge decides to go. See if the roadblock gets to put into play. This is one of those crucial moments for Zoark players when playing the mirror because you get to see when they play that bridge, it gives you a lot of information about their prizes. Oh, if yeah. you don't see a Sudowoodo come down... You can feel pretty comfortable you're not getting your roadblock this time. If you don't see a pseudo widow come down, I'm pretty sure you just scoop to next game. Like, I that, can that's how that. I kind of feel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will say last uh, last round we had a round where um, last matchup we actually had a round where James had his pseudo widow prize and never even took it the whole game. It was his last two, and he actually still managed to win that game. Wow. He got out of his Alolan muck as quick as possible to make sure that he was able to kind of counteract, but. Even so, it's just it's just such an uphill battle at that point. Yeah, the interaction between Pseudo Widow's Roadblock and Skyfield has been something that everyone has been trying since Pseudo Widow came into the TCG. Just having the ability to have eight bench Pokemon while your opponent only has four, it's almost unfair. It really is, to an extent. You know, Parallel City, sure, it kind of does the same thing. It's a five to three limitation, but when you're talking about eight to four, I'm allowed twice as many bench Pokemon as my opponent. That's a major advantage to be able to have on your side. Yeah, and there, the double execute, putting work in again, using this Ultra Ball for free. I can only imagine what he's going to be going for. Apu Lele gets a Colorus for next turn. Because, you know, of course, Riley's going to bench a few Pokemon. That's kind of what his deck does. Right. And I can only imagine, again, he's worried about that roadblock, so he wants to get the Lele down now, so he doesn't have to worry about it next turn, assuming that he's benching a fifth Pokemon now also. And looking at his hand, it's just stacked. Skyfield, double colorless, the colorless for next turn, and I think even a puzzle of time. I believe one more Ultra Ball, as you were mentioning earlier also. Curious to see where he puts the double colorless energy. He's got some. He's had some very unique attachments throughout the last couple games. So let's see where he decides to go with it. So he does have those two floatstone, which 
just it kind of gives him a little leeway. He doesn't have to attach it. Right. Which is what he decided to go for. So you must have heard you because he decided to actually hold the double colorless energy and not put it down. I mean, neither player is playing enhanced hammer, so there's not really a risk for it. The only thing that could happen by putting down that double colorless is, you know, possibly a, a wonder tag to grab Guzman and energy drive. But Which, to be fair, that's happened on stream quite a few times. No, it could definitely happen. I wouldn't be that surprised, and especially when your opponent already has um, access to the uh, two zeros and everything in play. I could see them being a lot more susceptible to wanting to get that knockout on the first turn. And there we see a Battle Compressor discarding the Zorua and two Executes, but it's because he has a Rescue Stretcher in his hand. Battle Compressor is essentially just uh, Ultra Ball. Right. He says, uh, well, now I don't need to worry about Bridget because well, I've already got my three Zoruas, so I can use Hex Maniac or whatever supporter I want this turn. It looks like N is that supporter of choice. Not really having much else in his hand, so... But it is nice to be able to say he's executes are already in the discard pile. He doesn't have to worry about drawing him into them after this end of six. Both players go into a new fresh hand. He did knock away the Skyfield and everything out of Isaiah's, and we don't see the Pseudo Widow just yet from Riley, so he's really going to want to fight an Ultra Ball. Otherwise, you know, Isaiah's going to be able to fill his bench in the following turn, which... You know, there's no EXs or GXs or anything on the board just yet, so it wouldn't be the biggest advantage, but it's definitely something he wants to make sure. All right, looking at Rally's six cards, uh, no Alolan Grimer or anything of the sort like that, not even his own pseudo Wudo. He does have an Ultra Ball, though, so if he wants to use his Execute to juice it this turn, he has the ability to grab either one. He's already holding a Zorak GX for the following turn and a Tapu Lele, so... Definitely got a couple different ways that he can do this. But no, just a pass. And now Isaiah can just explode out of the gate. All he needs is some Zorark GXs. Now, both players opting to hold their double color synergy on that first turn. Very interesting on both their sides. You know, Isaiah then getting his double color synergy end away. So a little bit of a punish in that aspect. But again, just wanting to make sure he's, he's safe. He just plays, makes a conservative route. He doesn't want his opponent to take advantage of any situations, you know, of something that he didn't have to do the following turn. Yeah, and with most decks, uh, after you play your first Battle Compressor, you discard, like, your e one Execute. Discard, like, your tech supporters so you can have them for later. But then if you play any multiple copies, it just puts them, like, you don't really need Battle Compressor later on in the game. Right. But when you play four executes and a bunch of other stuff like that, puzzle of time, you can do whatever you want. Right. And, and it looks like he's actually going to be doing that similar play that uh, that he did. We said on the Rescue Stretcher, Isaiah's going with that same anything you can do, I can do better game. He says, I'm going to play puzzles, and I'm going to grab my Zorark instead of my Zerua. And grab the other card that he put in there with the Battle Compressor as well, which I believe was the red card. Yeah, it was definitely the red card. And he also most likely has access to Hex Maniac or Getsis, because that's always what you want to do after a red card. Mary, and this is going to be an incredible turn to play it too, because he doesn't actually have any of his Zorak GXs in play yet. So this is going to be a moment where Isaiah is saying, I want to be able to put enough pressure onto the board so that you do not have to... He just wants to never see a Zorak GX. He wants to try to see, let me see if I can just run through these Zeruas, put a little bit into play. He's got the Mindjacker on there, so he's going to be able to take a knockout without finding the Floatstone. And there the red card comes down. The big bad item shuffling Riley's hand in and drawing four cards. Versus Seeker, I think he got the Hex Maniac, all right. It looks like, but he... Does he has not played it just yet? Wants to use stand in first, then play the hex maniac. Make sure Riley doesn't have any abilities that he can use this turn, whether it be wonder tag, using setup. But Isaiah's going to do anything he possibly can to make sure that he locks Riley out of this game. Yeah, these four cards are going to have to be pretty good to help Riley out of this situation. Even if he draws his Zorak GX, he's not going to be able to use the ability on this first turn. Did get a Via Seeker, so he's going to be able to at least draw a fresh hand of six with the N. Now, this is going to be one of those that, if he had actually played the Getsis, that also would have been good too, but he did have a Zorak, so either which one. All right, and Riley <laughs> draws a red card of his own. So Zorak GX comes down on the active, and there we see the first Seeker for the N. Unfortunately, you can't really play red card and then play N right after. Right, you're just going to just be wasting it at that point. <laughs> 
All right, so fresh hand of six for Riley, 5-4 Isaiah, and Riley really is on the back foot this game. Riley needs to get that Sudowoodoo into play, because if he doesn't, Riley's got that Zora GX in the active position. Like, he could, he could easily get knocked out on the following turn. Yeah, just executes coming out. And the Skyfield. And on the bench, no one's played a Skyfield yet. They play three copies apiece. Do you see the double colorless energy there for you? Wow, what a hand from Riley there. Yeah, we he's, see computer search, double colorless. He's got a, he could even, act, I, I, you know, I could even see him using a field blower here, knocking his own choice band off just so that way he could be able to come into his Zorak that he just got on the bench. Absolutely. It looks like it's what we're going to end up seeing. I think he wants to go and use, actually, Isaiah's Mind Jack with that foul play Zorak to be able to take the knockout and keep his Zorak GX safe. Man, that is such an amazing play right now. These are the moves that get these players into the position of the finals and keep them going and allow them to get that much closer to their victory. All right. Mind Jack goes down. Thanks to Mind Jack from foul play. <laughs> Isaiah does go with the Zorak GX promotion, so it's going to be pretty easy to take a knockout on this other Zorak. And he's one other bench Pokemon and a double colorless energy. That'll be enough to do the 100 damage that he needs. And he'll be taking only a single prize card, but Isaiah is at five already, so it's going to advance the game state and put him in the position of that even prize number where you usually want to be. Yeah, the important thing here is if he can actually get to another Hex Maniac and a double colorless, the Hex Maniac would put so much pressure on Riley to just draw what he needs off of one supporter. And I mean, I see that via Secret of Sand, so he's got access to Hex, it just comes down to can he find the double colorless energy that he needs? All right, there we see an Ultra Ball maybe getting that Shaman EX. It Depending on how many cards he has in his hand, it's just another way to try to draw without playing a supporter. Right, and he just, he's got to find that double colorless. He wants to take out the Zorak. Really, leaving that Zorak in play this turn would be really a detrimental spot for Isaiah. You know, to be able to keep up in this trade, you've got to be able to find your energy and your GCs. Oh, but there we see the Tapu Lele Wonder Tag for the Hex Maniac. He's got the, that was the extra Pokemon he needed. Does he have the double colorless energy to finish the knockout? We'll find out in a moment. I mean, his hand is massive, too, so kind of think he's bound to have it if you're Riley. Floatstone coming down on the Sudo Widow on the bench. And there's Choice Band. <laughs> he's faking us out a little. He's faking us out a little. He's, he wants to wait. Oh, we I, see double puzzle in his hand. So if he uses these, though, those will be the last two puzzle of time. He's already played the first two earlier, so at that point, that gives Riley a signal knowing, hey, he's not going to be able to get that red card back. He's not going to be able to get things Hold like Hold on a second. Charge. Could he actually Guzma up the Zorak on the bench and take a knockout? Actually, I, I think, think he that's could have what done we're it. seeing here. Mm, we're gonna, I don't know. He went for the hex for the following turn. I could see it happening. Yeah, he has the Guzma in hand. He has those executes in the discard. Mm, he doesn't want to go for it, though. He'd rather go for the Hex, it seems like. I, I, I'm I, okay with either play. Both of them shut off trade in one way or another, but he's got a Floatstone on the Zorak GX. I, I really would have liked to see the, uh, the uh, Guzma there to be able to take it out, but I can completely understand not wanting to overextend. And, oh... Ouch, Riley has to discard a Zeru off his computer search just in order to stay in the game. That's when you know things are starting to get a little bit rough. Oh, gosh. And is down, what, that that Zorua, the Zorua that was on the foul play, he had a rescue stretcher, one of them early, but here we see the Colrus, and this is kind of, he knew about the Colrus, so I think that's why he did it. He wanted to make sure he didn't overbench because if he got to the eight bench, he didn't want to make you know he didn't want to have a uh, give him that option to get that, get that huge hand. And what first two cards off the course are <laughs> double puzzle of time, and he and drew the pseudo widow. widow. Oh man, what an incredible turn for what a, Riley really does not want to go down without a fight. He is going to match up his opponent on every chance that he gets. And remember, even though he played the Pseudo Widow down, Hexamaniac is still in effect for this turn. So Isaiah won't have to discard his Pokemon until after he passes. 
Now he's he's really threatened by that sky field, so he feels he has to get the field blower here to be able to take out this sky field. And he gets the choice ban out as well. So he decides to leave the float zone on the Sudowoodo, making Guzma still a very relevant play. Um, he's able to ride his beating to set up the two shot. Not quite a one shot just yet, but both players having the roadblock road block established at this point. And there we see a right is speeding, but only for 60 damage. It's not really the kind of damage output we've seen from Zorhark this weekend. Not at all. I mean, it's got upwards of 200, and just see it doing only 60. Again, it really just gives a statement to what kind of position Riley's in, as opposed to Isaiah here. And there we see trade coming down from Isaiah. Remember, abilities are back on. That's why we saw him discard that Tapu Lele. At the start of his turn. Isaiah's really going to be looking to find a way to actually take this knockout. If he has the Hex Maniac, he still needs a Choice Band and two other basics. So, is it something that can pull off? Absolutely. But he needs the cards to go his way if he wants to be able to do it. And of course, still needs to find the Skyfield as well, since it did get blown away last turn. Yeah, he does get an Execute off the Ultra Ball that he discarded two eggs with. So that means the full four execute are in the discard or his hand. At this point, I mean, it's anybody's game still, but Isaiah in such a commanding position here. Three Zorak GXs onto the board at this point. Oh, we Another see a trade. Versus Seeker. Does he have the Skyfield in his hand along with the Choice Band? That's all he would need at this point. I see Floatstone. I don't necessarily see. I see the Choice Band. Does he have the Skyfield? He won't be able to puzzle of time, but feels pretty confident. Riley's already played Field Blower twice, so at this point he's just like, ah, I think I can put my tools down now a little bit more safe. Gets all four. I think we will see. I'm expecting. Oh. I am expecting a Skyfield. There's the first Seeker for the Hex Maniac. He's played it. Does he have the Skyfield? There's, oh, no, there's sky no Skyfield field in, play. in play. Hey, can you... you? Oh, I, think uh, they... I think they've caught it. I believe they're realizing yeah. that the Skyfield's not in play. Ooh, Isaiah's got to feel really bad after that one. Understanding that the Skyfield's not there, because Riley now has the option to end those executes right back into the deck. If he has to have all four of them in there, that's going to be really rough. Well, three. One gets... On the bench. Right, he yeah. does get to keep the one on the bench because Roadblock, uh, you know, isn't active at this point, but Skyfield's not in play, letting him go past the eight. And unfortunately, he did announce his attack already, so it is just a right of speeding for 150. Maybe this is the point where Riley tries to mount a comeback. Still, he's very far behind. Right, and I mean, I can't see a whole lot in his hand right now. He's still not going to be able to use abilities. So, either which way, you know, the Hex Maniac... Not a bad call. You want to slow you down, your opponent down as much as possible when you're in this kind of commanding lead. I don't think he gets the four. He's not going to be able to even knock out this Zorak. He'd actually be 20 damage short if he gets his bench to four and have the uh, and even with the choice band. If he gets the Hex Maniac and fills his bench to five. Well, no. Remember, Hex is still in effect. So if he just oh wow has, yeah yeah if he just gets to the five and, Pokemon. Oh then. no. Gets us for one card when Isaiah has, like, ten in his hand. That was not something you would have expected for on, on Riley's side. You do not expect to play against this at a ten-card hand and only get one. Riley's at three in hand. He's having to put this size toe down. It's getting more and more grim for Riley each turn that goes by. Things are not going for him this game the way that they did last. Yeah, and this is where not finding more bench Pokemon last turn is coming back into play where yeah, there just wasn't enough damage on you for me to actually do anything for this turn. Now, that being to say, if, if Isaiah can keep the Hex going on even longer, we know Riley's hand has just got that top of Lele. There's not really oh, good. there there's he draws the Skyfield, yeah. <laughs> there's two Skyfields. Oh, that's taunting him oh, just a I little think bit. I saw a Versus Seeker, maybe? He also needs to put that Execute in his discard pile. Oh, yeah. yeah. There we go. The Judge did catch it. So that's Again, what fantastic act of judging this weekend. I don't think we've had a single crazy issue on stream at all this weekend. Yeah, it, it's been great. And you just have to commend the Judge staff I, for that. I, and it's, it's wonderful. You know, I think I've only seen one penalty given out on stream, and it was for just a minor error and everything like that. Outside of that, just 
flawless. So we always want to commentate, you know, uh, remember the judge staff for having those shiny moments like these, because without them, we really wouldn't be able to have these smooth games like we are here. There we see a second double colors coming down onto Isaiah's field. Both Zorix are charged up with a choice band, by the way. So he's got the knockout already, so Isaiah's going to be going down to two prizes at the end of this turn. And he's got the, the Versa Seeker. Seeker. So he chooses to retreat, saving the Zork. Like, I value trade more I agree than with sacrificing that. this guy. I agree with that completely. I love that play there. He's he's making it so that with the fact that if he's going to play the Hex Maniac this turn, it's going to be so difficult for Riley to be able to knock out that Zork on the bench. He needs way too many cards to be able to pull that off, especially because I believe it may have even had enough damage for the Seismato to knock it out with a Choice Band. I can't see the dice perfectly, but I believe it's at 150. Yeah, so he did 60 before, and then last turn he did... 11. So I'm sorry, so he's, so at, he's at 170, so it's 40 health away, so right. That Seismitoad actually could have knocked it out with a Quaking Punch and a Choice Band, so a, a great play by Isaiah, making sure that he got himself out of range from that happening. Yeah, and he actually didn't even need to bench any other Execute, and just took the knockout, because he already attacked at the turn before. Right, so he didn't even need to worry about that extra damage. He said, eh, the Execute's only going to discard at the end of the turn anyways. Doesn't really make a difference. And that was such a quick turn from Riley uh, of evolving to the Zorak GX and a pass. Now abilities Sky, are back on Sky again. Field. All he needs at this point is the Hex Maniac. There it is, via Seeker. Hex Maniac's going to come into play after the propagation. We're going to see all four executes hit the discard pile. We are going to a game three, ladies and gentlemen, here at Dallas Regionals. There are 28 minutes left on the clock, but Riley Holbert, Isaiah Williams, they are going to go down to the wire. Yeah, both of these games have taken roughly 25 minutes apiece. So. We will have enough time to finish a full game, and I am excited. It's going to be great. Either which way this goes, I mean, uh, one of these players is going to be walking home the victor. One of these players is going to be walking home $5,000 more in their pocket. I mean, it's going to be a phenomenal turn either which way it goes. I, Riley's got the advantage because he gets to go first here, but we saw before that just because you go second does not mean you're out of this game. Exactly, and that's the power of this whole way they've built their decks, just being able to shut off Roadblock, get these Executes back, fill up your bench, and just take these surprise one-hit knockouts on your opponent's Pokemon. Right. I mean, it's just, and it's just so fast and so aggressive, and it's just so consistent at being able to pull off these knockouts. Skyfield, using all the traits, everything, I mean... I don't remember when we've had turns this interactive with so many different things going on and so many different, so much sequencing all at once. It really makes for some intricate and fantastic games to watch. Yeah, and I'm excited to watch this last game. Like I said before, it's been a long weekend. We are one game away from finishing off such a great tournament. And it's going to be wonderful either which way it goes. Both players shuffled up. Ready to go. Let's see if we see any other mulligans this time. Let's see if see we us. see a turn one gets us, maybe. We're going to see. I mean, all everything is on the line oh, at this point. <laughs> Riley does have a gets us in his hand, but he also and has that Bridget. And a Lele. He got whatever And he needs. a red card. Riley can actually... He's got a Zerua already. Oh, if he, he feels can red confident, card gets us. He could really put Isaiah in a crippling position on oh. this first turn. This could be a very oh, fast game three. That is, okay. you know, you only play one copy of red card, and there's only other. It's not exactly easiest thing to search. Whew. And a mulligan from cards? Isaiah. This is just going in Riley's favors without even a turn having been played. <laughs> Someone throw some water on me. I need to calm down. Like, oh, man. This really is starting to heat We're up. We're literally at the edge of our seats just waiting. Like, this is going to be an insane turn one from Riley, depending on what he chooses to do. I, I'm, I'm so intrigued. I want to know, does he go for it? I mean, where, where, it's how do you feel, you, you feel you like do? if you're greedy or not? Like, are you that greedy? And if it, ha if it works... You win. Like, uh, there's, oh, absolutely. There's, you, there's nothing else. If it doesn't work, well, you still have a Zora. still could draw an Ultra Ball. You can still draw another Zora, stuff right. like that. You've got two cards coming off the top still. And you and still you have a Lele for next turn. Exactly. So even if the Getsis doesn't pan off, 
you don't lose anything because you went first, so you're still oh and my another gosh. Mode of Oh man, <laughs> Riley's got a feel on top of the world. I can I can't see his face, but I can promise you there is a grin from ear to ear right now. <laughs> he he really needs that poker face right now. And I don't know if you saw this before, but I just also saw that Riley also has a shaman in his hand, so he could just pop Wait, off really? with that gets us. Yeah, he's a shaman in his hand as well. Oh, he's got shaman gets us tapu lele. He's got the red card. He's got a lot of options on this first turn. We could really see a lot going down. Man, what what a way to start off game three of finals. Isaiah picking up his hand. Is there gonna be a basic I There is but I think. I think it's a Tapu Lele. Not a hundred percent sure. Has a little time special charge doesn't and really matter shaman. too much. Alright, so here we flips go. Over. The game has begun. We see a double colas come out. I just want to see that red card hit the board. I want to see there the Getsis. There it is. Turn one red card. Isaiah not having a Zoru in play. Just a Tapu Lele. Man. Riley is in the position that he needs to be. These are the moments. This is why I say that Getsis is such a powerful card. You could just strip away your opponent's options on the first turn. They don't even get a chance. There's nothing they could do to counteract this play because they haven't even gotten to play a card yet. We see Execute, oh, Getsis, no. and a computer search. Oh, no. Oh, That's no. not going to go well. If he plays oh. it, oh man, if Riley only knew what was in Isaiah's hand, if he only knew the damage he could have done with that gets us, it's a risk play, but man, he would have shut him down. He would have lost the computer shirts that he's got in his hand, and his hand would have been completely dead without the top of it, without his top. Man. Now this is the first time we actually see that Alolan Grimer come into play for Riley. He has yeah. not been able to get it out once this entire series. So this time he said, I know what my strategy is. I've got my Bridget. I'm going first. I open Zuru already. I'm getting the cards that I need, and I'm going to shut this down. I'm still kind of shaking from the potential that gets us what it had. Like... I know. Whew. Let's see, So we are going to see. It looks like he's got a Guzma, the computer search. Ooh, Riley, Riley's probably shaking in his boots. The moment that computer search hits the table, he's probably just like, ah, oh, man. I should have gets this. <laughs> Even if it was, it's only it would have only been for one card. It really would have drawn one, but it would have made Isaiah's hand otherwise completely unplayable. He would have had to bench and execute and pass. He had the gets this. Oh yeah, he would have ended up gets thing, and that's it. For maybe like one or two cards. Right. Oh man. So we do see the computer search still coming down. I, can you play a Bridget here? I, I'm not too sure, honestly. He's only got two other cards in his hand, and neither one of them, like, one of them sure can draw him cards. It's the Getsis, but you're making a big gamble if you go for the Bridget. Yeah, Bridget and hope to draw into a Zorark or something like that, but here's the Ultra Ball. I think we're going to see a Shaman. I do like Shaman here. Right. I think this is probably one of the best plays he could have made, actually, because he's going to be able to go to a fresh hand of six. Now he gets to decide if he wants to bridge it afterwards. Still hasn't played his supporter yet for the turn. It feels really bad having to put that that Sudowoodo in the discard pile, but there's only so much you're able to do. All right, a fresh six cards thanks to setup from Isaiah. And I believe I did see a supporter card in that hand. There's a Zora as well as long as a Battle Compressor too. He does at least get the one Zora. Yeah, you know, you want to make sure you get two because it, it's just so uncomfortable only having that one on the board. It, you know it really Riley opens up Rally to a Guzma play. Right. Isaiah's contemplating. He's not really sure. Uh, you know, he's got the time to be able to make the decision, so he's really got to make an educated guess here. You know, how do I advance this? I'm in a disadvantaged spot. I've now got one of the shamans on my bench. My opponent's already got Roadblock. I think he's going to end up... I think the supporter that I saw is actually a Hex Maniac. But I think that's actually the only card he's going to get to play. Wow, and Hex Maniac coming down. Riley drawing his own copy of Hex Maniac. Does he have access to start <coughs> getting Zorark GX in play? I don't think so. I saw a double colorless energy, Hex Maniac but... from himself and a pass. This is the opening Isaiah needs. 
At, but at the same time, there's only so much that he can accomplish this turn without abilities as well. He doesn't have a way to be able to get a supporter. Oh, and I think it was my mistake. It wasn't a battle compressor. It was a choice ban in his hand. Perfect. So he does Colrus here. He was debating on the Hex or the Colrus last turn. So the Hex, that was actually great play from Isaiah. Not playing the Colrus last turn. Playing the Hex, making Riley feel like he doesn't have a lot of options. I, I got to say, if, if, Riley, if Isaiah had played that Colrus last turn, I don't think Riley would have ended up playing a Hex Maniac. And oh, there's he, the Colrus for six. I don't see a Zorak just yet. Doesn't look like he got... Oh, he did. Oh, wow, All right. okay. He did get the Zorak GX and another Zerua. So even under Roadblock, he's got his double Zerua. He's got his double Zerua to back up that Zorak GX. x Maniac is live, so he can put one more bench Pokemon down if he has it. But he is at least able to take the first prize, taking out Riley Zerua. So what looks like such a commanding position for Riley to take the first aggression, Isaiah decides to turn it around, get some of the cards he needs to be able to put him into a good spot now. And now remember, he does not have... Or Isaiah does not have Sudowoodo in play. He had to discard it. That turn right. one. So Isaiah could easily just pop off here and Riley. get... The, I'm sorry, Riley could just pop off here, get a Zork GX into play, get enough Pokemon, get the Choice Band down. He is only drawing 8 cards here off this course. It's not those monster 10, 12 courses. He needs a lot. He needs a Skyfield, a Battle Compressor probably to put the Executes and everything in the discard pile, get him back out. He needs a Zorark. He's got a maximum of 1 trade this turn if he hits it, so I don't know that he'll be able to take the knockout on the Zorark, but hopefully he's at least able to see the Zorark so he can get, the, uh, get some damage on the board. Oh no, it's not looking good so well, far. But... I did see a double puzzle at least. I don't know if there's is anything... There much in his discard? There's a no, Zorua. actually, there's, there's not. Never mind. <laughs> That's not going to get him very far. And he drew that Alolan Muck, but right now, he does not want to play that down, because the only I... thing that's saving him right now is that Sudowoodo. He's going... He looks like he is going to play the double puzzle. He flashed it to his opponent. I think he's going with... It looks like the Zerua and... Red card? Red card would have immediate impact, but... Attack. Yeah, it looks like Zora yeah. red card is the choice for Riley here. I don't know that he's going to play it down just yet, but... Um, he knows he's got to be really, really careful here. Because that Zerua right there... All right. I, think, I think he's going to try to go for Shamaniax to try to draw into the cards he needs. I think you're right. He's going to go for the Shaman looking for that Zorak GX... Oh, well, that works as well. Oh, that's, 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 that's even, there pretty much Zorak GX, and he drew it himself. Wait, wait. He's actually one Pokemon away from the knockout. He's got the, he's he's got the choice trade band. away from the knockout. He has the choice band, so if he actually draws any basic or a battle compressor or any way to get a Pokemon, he'll have the knockout on this Zorak. And no! Oh. Two Zorak GX, and unfortunately he played that Zora down this turn. So he's just one card away from the knockout. So close, Where's but not able to take it. when you need it? He has to execute. Has not been able to find that battle compressor just yet, so he's just going to be able to put down... He's going to put him up to uh, 190 damage, which means he can actually follow up with actually a Quaking Punch, uh, a Sky Return. There's a couple different ways he can finish this knockout if Isaiah doesn't play an Acerola or something this turn. Which, actually, glancing at Isaiah's list, it's actually something unique about it. I just realized... He doesn't play any Acerola. Yeah, exactly. Riley plays the one copy, but Isaiah doesn't have any. So that damage is its going to stick. Yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't play anything that really spreads to do damage. Opting not to play that Oricorio that we see most Zork decks try to counter Night March with. So it's going to have to come active if he wants to take a knockout, but at least he can do it with something like Quaking Punch or Sky Return to be able to get a little bit more out of it as well. We do see a Hex Maniac in Isaiah's hand. He could have the option to turn off Roblox. We also see the red card as well. We could see some big plays here. He doesn't seem to have a choice band, so we're not going to see the Hex play to go around Sudowoodo, I don't think, but he's still got his trades available. I don't think Isaiah has any executed his discard pile at all. Is that right? Not, not even one, I don't think. Yeah, I think he also hasn't been... Getting his battle compressors. So, Isaiah contemplating, really going into the think tank here, trying to figure this out. It's it's a really scary feeling when you're staring down that Sudowoodo, 
not even having a copy of your own. I feel like that, that Hex Maniac is just such a scary play this turn. He's got to be able to go for... Yeah. <laughs> All right, he's shortcutting a little bit, but red card his opponent, and then Chorus for a ton of cards. 11 to be exact. Right. He knows that playing the Hex Maniac this turn, as much as it's a great card to be able to pair with that red card, he still is a little bit behind on Riley's setup. So he's got to be able to get a couple more things in play so that Chorus he wants to evolve his Zeroes into Zoraks this turn if possible. So it feels just better than the Hex Maniac to him at this point. All right, Riley's four cards from the red card. Zorark, Azorua, the Pokemon he needed last turn. And I believe a Puzzle of Time as well. Maybe even Karen. I believe I think that was the last card. I think it was Karen and Puzzle. And here is the 11 cards from Isaiah. I see a computer shirt's in there, so... Oh, and I actually see the Mind Jack Zorark. So he's actually, if he has a double colorless with that Zorark, he's going to be able to take a knockout on the GX here without even using his own Zorark GX in the process. It's exactly 200, well, it's 220 damage with Riley's current bench setup. So this is the advantage to not having that Sudowoodo in play. You get to use your opponent's bench here to be able to get the extra damage you need if you can't get your own. And this is crazy. Does he have the double colorless? Ultra Ball. He's at least got two trades that he can do in the meantime before having to evolve that other Zora into the Mind Jack. So if he can find a double colorless or a copy of Puzzles of Time and the top four cards, then he's going to be able to get that knockout. This is also one of the bigger differences in these lists, too, where Isaiah opts to go with that Mind Jack stand in Zorark, where Riley goes with the foul play Zorark. Which I really love the Mind Jack Zorark in that mirror match. I mean, it just really punishes those plays when they try to go for the big knockout with the Zorark GX. Yeah, and I think we're going to see it here if he hits that double colorless energy. I see Rescue Stretcher, so at worst case scenario, if he can't get the double colorless on the knockout, he'll at least be able to get Sudowoodo back into play. Right, I think I actually already I, I see, I the see the double colorless in his hand. hand when right you draw center. 11 plus cards, yeah. it's kind of guaranteed to be There it is. Hand. The double colorless onto the Mind Jack Shark. Stand in ability comes in. We're going to see two more prizes come down for Isaiah. Taking a huge lead on Riley. It seemed like he was having such a great start. and He was putting the aggression, but Isaiah now taking three prizes. Riley having taken none. And what a swing of events for Riley. Looking pretty. Isaiah Mulligan a couple times. Had almost everything he wanted. The turn one red card even. And now he's stuck with no Zorak GXs in play. He's got the one in his hand. Well, he has two three in his hand, hand, I think. Oh, no. Okay, yeah, the he one. He does have that Karen that you were mentioning as well, it looks like, as the other card. So he's going to immediately ditch that for trade. Knows he does not want it. But he can't get another Zorak into play if he wants his turn because he just put that Zorak just down now as well. And he drew the Colrus off the trade, but opts for an N here, kind of trying to disrupt Isaiah a little bit, because remember, Colrus for 11, a couple trades later, I, he's got to have everything he needs. But Riley's only getting these six cards. He doesn't have any more trades left. If Riley doesn't see a double Colrus energy off of this N, that mind jack isn't going anywhere. Oh, definitely, and it is hitting for 220 damage, like you said. He put the Zerua back down, so he's just right back in the same position he was before. He had to bench that Zerua. All right, this is Four. important. Six there it he is. does hit All the right. double colorless. So he'll be able to at least take the knockout on the Mind Jack, but it is just a one-prize attacker. If Isaiah's able to take a knockout on anything on the board, he's going to be able to advance his game state. And there we see an Ultra Ball discarding a Bridget and an Ultra Ball. One thing Riley's really been missing is those executes this game. It's incredible. With both games, the both games previously, the players have been able to get those battle compressors almost instantly to get those executes in the discard pile. But both of them had a lot of trouble getting them into play this turn. And you can see how many resources they've had to discard because of it. Yeah, there's the Shaman EX off the Ultra Ball. Double Colorless on the Zorak GX. Shaman set up for four. Let's see Guzma. Hexmania, or either Ace or Rolla. And here's that Battle Compressor, though, that we were just talking about. So he's going to be able to get those Executes in the discard pile if he wants. But is it too little too late? He has discarded a lot of stuff. And yeah, he's opting, okay, I'm going to play this Alolan Muck. Try to stop some of your basic abilities. Like, try to prevent a Tapu Lele. I mean, that really is an interesting play. I mean, I, I, I'm 
I want to see how that goes for him because realistically, he just opened up a massive window for Isaiah. Like, sure, he can't use his propagation and everything like that, but he doesn't have all of his executes at his discard pie. I think it's only like one or two. So he's not. Oh, there he is. Like, yeah, yeah. I got, I got muck and play. Uh, you can't use propagation. Right. But with the board setup that he's got now, because that roadblock's turned off, if Isaiah can just draw mainly into the bench Pokemon he needs, he's already got a choice ban on his Zorak GX. He might actually be able to take the knockout here. Yeah, and you have to remember, he does play a little less basic Pokemon just because he plays the four Execute. Right. But I don't believe we've seen the Rescue Stretcher yet. I mean, he's got a, quite a few different ways to be able to get the Pokemon that he needs. There's the double colorless energy that he can use to put on that choice to work with the Choice Band. At this point, it's just going to be a matter of drawing the basics. He's got a Colrus in hand that's going to get him to at least 11 cards again. This is looking pretty good for Isaiah. Man, this is crazy. You could even maybe see a Guzma on the Lolan Muck. Or Just on one remember, of the Shamans. Remember, he needs to take an extra knockout right. because with the three prizes. And taking out that Muck means he could just explode with multiple Execute Hex Maniac in the following right. turns. So we do see the double colors there, but what else does he have? Is he going to go for the Colrus to try to take the knockout? Does he want to go for the Hex instead? It, so many different options. I see at least an Oracorio in his hand, so he's at least got one of the basics. All right, let's start counting the Pokemon in the discard. <laughs> I believe, well, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm no, I know, I know, but I think he's got at least two Executes left. I think he's got at least a Lele or two. He's got at least one Shaman left in the deck because it's not in the discard pile. Might even have a Zerua left. He's got the Rescue Stretcher, Puzzles of Time. I mean, there's quite a few options to get the Pokemon he needs. Yeah, and the more Pokemon he benches before he plays a Chorus, the more he draws. And I know what like, he's got is counting the Pokemon in Riley's discard as well, too, because you're like, okay, if I have to use this Oracorio, is it going to be any good? And I think there's like two or three Pokemon in the discard. <laughs> Well, but the thing is, is if he's actually able to get his Sudowoodo back out of the discard pile, then he could put a couple more in there. If there's even just two, you put four more in there, that'll actually allow the Oracorio to even knock out the Zerua that's on the bench. Oh, that is smart. And there's the Versus Seeker for the Colrus. Isaiah will be drawing 11 cards. He needs a lot, but it's possible. If he can even... He needs a lot, but damage, 11 cards is a lot. Right. Has he used either of his traits? I, he's it's used one, at I think, least right? one. I'm I not sure on both I think it was them. just the one that he discarded the Zorak GX for. And this is a huge Colrus. Isaiah is at such a huge lead right now. Riley only having that one attacker charged up. And there's, We are at that 7.5 minute mark, but I don't believe it's going to matter. I think these players are definitely going to be able to finish this game. I see a Battle Compressor. I don't know if he's got any Pokemon. The way he's holding it, it's hard to see, but if he's got the five, he's just going to slam them down. One. Right. One. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're stopping at one. <laughs> but he does at least get his rule. It's the best one that he really could have found. Now, again, if he's able to get that Rescue Stretcher here and put his own Sudowood in play, we'll do nothing because there's a load of muck out. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm glad we finally caught that. And yes. Battle Compressor from Isaiah depends if he even really wants to put more Execute in the discard because of the Alolan Muck. He'd rather just draw into him and bench him naturally. Right. So he just goes with that Pokemon Ranger that he's never going to want to find, puts the end in the discard pile, might as well have it ready so in case he needs to puzzle or via secret later. It's almost like when you battle compressor things away, it's easier to get them out of your discard pile than it is your deck sometimes because yeah, of all the it's options. A, it's a little bit easier. Right. All right, let's see what he decides to do. I think I see double puzzle of time in his hand, so he's got options. Just where does he decide to go with it? Actually, he's got triple Three puzzle, puzzle of, time. of time. Triple puzzle of time. He's got some supporters. He's got a float stone. So with triple puzzle of time, he could get to mm, be one short. Yeah, because he could double puzzle. Or even Is there a puzzle in the discard? I actually don't know. So yeah. that, that would actually stop it as well, but... If he had put that Oracorio down before the course, it could have made a big difference. All right, and there it is, just a Rhydus beating 
with the damaged Zoroark. So I really like that there because he's he didn't end up actually taking the knockout on the Zorark GX, meaning that if Riley wants to use Seismitoad or Shaman, one of the advantages cards to take in the knockout, then he's going to have to either manually retreat the Zorark or find a float stone to be able to do it. I think this was the best time to be able to use that damaged Zorark. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Riley decides to actually try to take a knockout with Seismitoad, try to disrupt his opponent a little bit because we know from our point of view Isaiah has a ton of items in his hand those three right. puzzle of times that could be what Riley needs to be able to swing that matchup even just for that one and turn here we see Ooh. the Acerola there it oh, is we will see a quaking punch kind of a card that has fallen by the wayside with all these new GX Pokemon coming out but Seismitoad is still here it's still very good Especially when your hand, opponent's hand is 10 cards and most of them are items. Right. I mean, the Quaking Punch is just going to be enough damage to take this knockout. Even a computer search here from Riley, he's going to have this explosive turn. That Ace Roller was just the card he needed in that scenario. Again, one of the key differences between both their decks was that Ace Roller, and we can clearly see that it just made a... That was a pretty big impact that it just had there. Yeah, for sure, and the Quaking Punch <laughs> will shut off all items in Isaiah's hand. And he discarded that Ranger with Battle Compressor, but didn't really, like, if I had a Versus Seeker, I would have picked it up. You know, but uh, now at this point, no way to get it out of the discard pile. Yeah, can't draw into it. No. He almost, he's, he might be regretting that a little bit here. All right, here's the puzzle of time as well. I love this red card and a Quaking Punch. This is going to be an incredible turn. He's going to put him down to four. He's got only one trade that's live. Sure, he's got the other Zoro there, but he's got to find the other Zoro to even be able to use it. Now, what's interesting is, again, Isaiah still has a Rescue Stretcher, still has all those Puzzle of Times. Riley's at that big bench again. We could see the Mind Jack come into play once again to be able to really punish this full bench that he's got. He doesn't need a choice ban. I don't know how you're going to see the Mind Jack when you don't have access to Rescue Stretcher. You know, that's a very good point, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, I don't see it being a, a reliable way to get this Seismitoad knocked out. I mean, he's, he can do it. He's got a trade. He's got access to his Execute because he's not Hex... Well, no, excuse me, he doesn't have access to his Execute. So he's just got to, again, manually draw all the cards he needs to get the knockout on board while also being item locked now. Yeah, you got partial ability lock with Alolan Muck. Item lock with Seismitoad's Quaking Punch and the kind of hand disruption with the red card. It's not looking pretty for Isaiah right now. This may have been that turn that Riley really needed because next turn he can easily follow up with a Guzma to take a two prize to take two prizes on that Shaman, take a prize on the Zerul because he needs to take a single prize anyways. A lot of different options for Riley to be able to swing the game right back into his favor. And remember, since Riley plays that Acerola, we could even see a Versus Seeker Acerola choice band knockout on any Pokemon Isaiah tries to attack with. Right. That's the thing. Isaiah's pressured to take these one-hit knockouts at this point, but it's going to be really difficult under the circumstances. And the clock is ticking in this match. We're at a minute and a half. We're going to see time called on these players pretty soon. But we're probably still going to see all the prizes taken from one end to the other because both players are within two turns of finishing this game. There's a double colorless on the Shaman EX. Not what you want to see. Sky Return putting 30 on the Seismitoad. Does he have a way? Or he's just... No. He can't. <laughs> Execute has resistance. resistance. So he's actually a really good play on behalf of Isaiah. Put a little bit of damage on Seismitoad. Make it a little bit easier to knock out next turn. Make it so the Ace Roller play doesn't do as much, but at the same time, putting up a Pokemon that that Seismitoad will not have a way to knock out. Because right, you can't here, put a Choice Band either. Here we see the computer search from Riley, really eyeing down maybe a Guzma. Guzma, double colorless Choice Band could spell disaster for Isaiah. If and he, there's the double colorless. Does he have everything he needs? Trade. Here's a Rescue nope. Stretcher. Got another trade. 
if he's able to actually use the Guzma to take out that Zoar GX, I can't see anything going well from that oh, point I, forward. Oh, I see a Verse Seeker in his hand. Even if he doesn't take out the Guzma, even if he takes out, I mean, doesn't take out the Zorak GX and he just takes out the Zerua, as long as he gets one of those knockouts this turn instead of taking out the Execute. There's the Guzma, Guzma. on oh. the Zorak GX, bringing up his own Zorak. Right. Double Colors come down, and he for sure has to have that Choice Band. There it is. DCE. I see the Choice Band next to it as well. We're going to see a knockout here. Riley Holbert, wait. Uh, yep, there it is! There's choice Band coming down, even a special charge to put Double Colorless back into the deck. Riley Holbert, he has set his eyes on this trophy, and he is not looking back. This is phenomenal. He is going down to one prize. Time has been called. There are only two players, two turns left for each player, but Riley says it doesn't matter. I need it's one on the wall. more. He is gunning. For this victory. Riot is beating. Knockout on the Zorak GX. One prize left before Riley Holbert is declared the champion. Isaiah really has to come back. Only two turns. To try to figure that out. He's got to put a huge dent in this turn. There is no ability. Item lock this turn. So he's got the ability to pull off a knockout on the Zorak GX. He's going to need a lot. Because he doesn't have access to his abilities. You see Isaiah getting really nervous. His hands are moving so fast. He's got a little bit of time. He doesn't have to move as quickly now. But I Riley even has a second win condition. Isaiah has to take a knockout in the next two turns. Because if not, Riley just wins. Because he's ahead on prizes. Even if he can't take the last one. Exactly. We might even see maybe a paralyzing gaze to paralyze, and then next turn, a Guzma play to bring up like a Shaman and take a knockout. Right. But then you still just play down because you're just tied up. Right. And at that point, Riley, no matter what, Riley is going to have the first chance to end this game. He's going to have the first chance to claim the trophy, the first chance to pull up $5,000 off because he's in the lead here. One prize left. You know that Riley can smell it. He's got to be on the edge of his seat now, just like we are. And this has been such an amazing match. And I don't think there's a better way to end it. Oh, there is the stand-in Zoroark. So he's going to be able to take a knockout. You can play items now, so... But the question is, what does he go good. with it? Is he going to go for a red car and a hex? He's got to be able to make sure Riley doesn't get a DC, because with Riley's board, he's literally a double colorless energy away from stealing this game if he comes in with this mind jack, and you know that's what he's doing at this point. <clears throat> Man, this game has been so back and forth, and I have to say, so far, this mind jack Zorak has looked a lot better than foul play Zorark in this series at least. I gotta say, it's put in a lot of work. He's taken a lot of prizes with it already. He's gonna go for it. It looks like he's, he's contemplating, do I go for the end? Do I go for the hex? These are those crucial moments that it's so hard to find which one is a definitive correct answer to be able to make that play. You almost, you gotta take a chance. So, if, so let's do some math. If he goes for the red card, his opponent gets four cards plus the five for the turn. And if he does the hex as well. So five right. cards total. If he does the N, his opponent draws one for the prize, one for his turn, and then he has access to one trade. Right. So that's only Less four card. cards. So the N is definitely going to be the better option than, than that red card hex. And there it is. Uh, Zor coming down. Shaman on the bench just kind of... Yeah, I'm there. I don't want to draw it with this end. Right. He's just like, I mean, at this point, it's literally going to be the next turn wins, I feel. Because Isaiah takes the two prizes, goes down. If Riley gets the DCE, he's obviously going to emerge a victor. But then on Isaiah's side, he's literally just got that stand-in just sitting there. He's going to be able to knock out whatever Riley puts up. All right, so to be fair, Riley does have a few more outs than just a DCE. Versus Seeker is also an out because there is a double colorless on the Seismitoad, and there's 30 damage on it. A Versus Seeker 4 and Ace Arola gets you the double colorless. Right. So he's got a couple different ways that he can find it. I, I, if you're not at the edge of your seat, I don't know what you're doing. I this am, has been so intense. I am at a loss for words, and as you guys can hear, I am a man of many of them, and I just <laughs> don't know what to say at this point because it's anybody's game, but Riley's got the option first. All right, Mind Jack. Let's see what he's got. He brings up the Zorark. He's already feeling comfortable. Another Zorak. 
We see the first trade. trade. Rescue stretcher. Don't go to the synergy. Riley Holbert is your Dallas Regional Champion. The last, last card. Oh my gosh. What an incredible way to end that series. Really couldn't have gone any better in any way. Oh man. Such a close series down to 1-1 one, one prizes. Time called. We hear the crowd. There's a 15 second delay on the outside stream. So they just got the message of who's the victor. Oh man, it wow. is exciting. That it has probably been one of wow. the best matches I've 